All right, okay, so we're ready to begin. So I'm using my white knights. Feel free to use whatever you have. I also have some metallics. I'm not quite sure if I'll use them, but they're super pretty and they were lying on my desk. So we may or may not use them. We are doing this, um, this little stocking here. So a little bit of sketching needed. So we've got a basic stocking and then uh, some baubles at the top three and then we're going to do some pine leaves and berry kind of elements here and then just string to kind of have it hanging so cute simple and fun so for brushes I will definitely be using the number eight silver black velvet number four as well for details and um, let's see I think I will definitely use the Yeah, I'm going to use the flat uh, from Zen Art Supplies just to kind of lay down the color. Actually, you know what? I'm going to keep this on the side because my plan is to go in the middle here and add some nice details. So we might not use the, the flat at all. But anyways, yeah, that's what we have so far. I've got water ready. I've got paper towel and we are good to go. Okay, so we're going to start off with, oh, We've got one more person joining us. So we're going to start off and let me just make sure Beatrice, she's connecting to audio. Okay. So we're going to start off by painting the, the baubles and the, and the greenery first. And the reason being is so that then if, if there's any overlapping, we can skirt around it when we're painting the actual stocking itself. Okay, so I see Beatrice has joined us. Hi, Beatrice. We're just about ready to start painting. Feel free to go ahead and do your rough drawing and then hop in with the painting, okay? So I'm gonna start off by using the ruby red from my collection for the bubbles. And I'm just gonna mix some paint on here. And what I also want to have is a darker shade of red for the edges to kind of indicate the shadow for this. So I think for that, I'll use a little bit of green, add a little bit of green to it to get darker or maybe even some Payne's gray, I think would work. Okay. And I'll use the number four for that actually. Let's just pre-mix some of that. So I'm gonna get some of the green I'm using green from It's called green from St. Petersburg, the White Knights. Okay, so starting off by painting a little bobble. And if you wanna try, if, you, if you're looking for that whole loose look, then try and leave some white space to add indications of, as indications of a glisten maybe, or just a loose style. I'll leave that up to you. So now I'm going in with the darker color and I'm just going to cover this up. And by cover it up, I mean paint the rest of the bubble. And if you want it to be a little more, what's the word I'm looking for? adding more variety to the color tones. You can just go in with just water on your brush or no water on your brush, a clean brush, and just kind of swoop out certain areas to kind of make it seem lighter. And then this way you've got some nice darks and lights. Or you can just go back in and add more of the red in the areas that you want it to be darker. So I'm just getting a little bit more of the darker hue. And I'm just going to touch up the edges here. Perfect. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the next ones. So for this one, I'm going to start off by painting the outer parts first. So right here. 
and I'll try and leave some white space. And then the part touching this first bobble, I'm gonna go in with the number four and close it up with a darker hue. And so this way we've got two different shades and then the shadowy bit is enhanced more. How does that look? Yeah, that looks good. Sometimes I need to look at the screen because when I'm painting at this angle, it looks fine. And then I look up and it's slightly off. So it helps when I look at the screen and then I can see what needs fixing, if anything at all. Just adding some more touch-ups of this color here and just dabbing some more of this darker hue on this side before we move on. Notice I've also left like a sliver of white space between these two. I'm liking the white space. Okay, now I'm gonna go on and do the third one, which is right below here at the bottom, getting more of that ruby goodness. I'm gonna do one more here. And again, the part touching the bobble on the top, I am going to leave that white and go in with the number four and add the darker hue. So I'm just painting this, the outer portion of it red. And then we're going in with the darker hue and closing the whole bit up. <clears throat> painting the rest of the bobble in. So there we go, we're done. Just dabbing some more of this darker color there so that it can dry up darker as opposed to lighter. Perfect, so I'm liking this lights and darks happening and I think the white spaces really do add something nice. Uh, so now we can move on to adding our pine, pine leaves and such. So feel free to add regular leaves or even holly leaves if you, like if that's a preference for you, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Now, uh, I think what I will do for this is I'll use a combination of maybe three different greens for the needles itself and then for the actual center, maybe a little bit of uh, brown. So my choices of color are going to be, let's see, um, green, chromium oxide, and then a little bit of olive green as well. So I'm just going to mix it in this green area here that I got. And what I will do is I'll start off with doing a couple of them in green first and then switch over, take my number eight and just using the tip of my number eight, I'm gonna get one other green so that we get some nice blends happening before they dry up. So the whole point is to catch it before it dries. So let's go for the next green. The next one is chromium that I'm using. So I'm mixing that on here. And then we'll do the, if you want to do the brown stem in between, um, <clears throat> we'll do that at the end or introduce a third brush if needed. If you want that flare of brown happening right away. Okay, so I got these colors mixed up. Let's start. So I'm going to start to do one here first. And we can fluctuate between the brown stems and the green stems. So I think that would be a nice variety too. So I'll start off by doing our jaggedy little textured leaves and notice the white space that I'm leaving in between because we wanna go in with that second additional green, which I have over here. And it seems to be very light. So I'm gonna get some more directly from the pan. and just touch it up. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is 
uh, as I'm looking at this now, I'm realizing the darker hue for the greens, I think would be nicer to have it towards the edge and then the lighter ones. I mean, you can spread them out throughout, but especially towards the edges so that it's indicative of shadow. Uh, let's get a little bit of the olive green. And just add that in. Okay, the olive green didn't quite work out because I've got so much green on here. So maybe adding a third would help if you really want that olive. Um, let's do some more here. Now I'll get some olive I think for this. So washing off my brush, it's gonna be a lot of back and forth washing and going back in. So I've got a little bit of olive happening there. Uh, going back in for the darker green. I'll get some over here. And then just gonna get some of that olive using this brush. Perfect, okay. Just gonna cover this area up to give it like a nice darker shadowy effect. <clears throat> Let's do one over on this end here too. And as I mentioned, towards the end where you're touching the bubbles, like the darker green would be nicer. Going in with this one, I'm gonna get a little bit more of that chromium, mix it up with a little bit of the uh, olive, get a nice variety of the green, like a nicer green. Slight variation in color. Leave that white space, don't feel the urge, fight the urge to cover up all the white space. And at this point, I think some of most of them are still slightly damp. So I'm gonna get a little bit of the Mars Brown. And I'm just gonna add Not really, um, I'm not drawing in the full line. I'm just kind of adding bits and pieces to the spine area of the of the leaf. So you might not see it because it's so dark already with the dark green, but it's in there and it's quite subtle. Actually, I'm gonna zoom in. So you can see this better, there we go. Okay, so continuing on, I'm gonna continue creating these little guys. So I think it, let's do one over here at the top and then we'll move on to the sprigs of, uh, which we'll call it the berry things, yeah. And I'm taking special care to go around the bobble so that I don't lose that nice circular shape. Washing off my brush, I'm gonna get a little bit of that olive and add some sprigs or strokes in there. Add that nice variety. Now you can get some of the brown if you want and just add that in. Okay, 
So at this point, I think what I will do for this area here, because these sprigs of berries, I think you they're kind of mingled in with some of them. So we'll do these leaves, these pines, but on a lighter value. Same color, just going with a little bit more water so it's not as dark. So I'm using my green first to kind of do our little strokes. And again, I'm not doing like a perfect leaf. I'm just kind of doing these haphazard strokes to kind of indicate that they're in the back and you can kind of maybe see them, but they're not quite fully formed. Uh, you just know that there's some there. So giving nice texture, lots of white space, kind of like filling up that space, but not quite uh, giving it too much definition. And of course, making sure that it is lighter. So kind of like this here, as you see. Okay, so now what we'll do is using the, we'll allow this to dry just a tad bit, and then we can go in and add some uh, we'll do the sprig, the branch in a brown, and then do another shade of red for the berries. I just want to add a little bit of the darker green just in certain areas here, just so we've got a different value and it looks giving it a little bit more definition while still leaving it loose. That's it. Okay, so let's allow that to dry for a bit and then we can come back to it. Um, actually, no, you know what? We don't need to allow it to dry, it's fine because we're it's kind of coming up from here. So I'm getting my, what was it? Mars Brown. So I'm getting Mars Brown using number four and I'm gonna go ahead and add that first sprig here. Feel free to have your branches coming out however you see fit. Give it some nice movement. I've got another one happening here. And then finally that there, okay. That's perfect, okay. So I think I would also like to have some of the brown running into the red. So instead of doing all my sprigs or branches, I'm gonna go right ahead, get my number eight, and I'll get some of the Matter Lake red this time, just using the tip of the brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint these berry type elements in. And again, it's just like a more elongated shape. You can make it circular if you wish, because we've got like circular baubles happening at the top. I figured let's make these to be um, a little more almond shaped or longer. And try and leave some white space in there if you can. If not, that's okay. I'm just adding a couple of dots here and there to kind of indicate like it's fading off. We could even do a splatter after if you wish. Uh, I'll leave that up to you guys. Something like that. Okay. So back to number four we go and we are going to get the, whatchamacallit, what was it? Mars Brown, yes. And we're gonna do another one over here. So same technique, Mars Brown first, and then going in and adding our little, they almost look like, I guess the shapes, leaving a little bit of white space in there, they look like flames on a candle, I guess. Pretend like you're trying to do that. 
I'm just gonna get a little bit more of the red, the Matter Lake red. Or what you can also do is while it is damp, I know it's super tiny, you can get a little bit of the cadmium red light because these two go really well. And just give it that like orangey hue, some of them, not all of them. And then we've got one more to do. Let's do that here. Great, now going back with the number eight and getting some of the Matter Lake red using the tip of the brush and creating our little berries. Or what you can also do is just do the one side of the berry and then go in with the cadmium and do the other half. And this way you get a blend happening right away like a natural blend. Perfect, okay, so that's that. And now we can move on to doing the stocking. So for the stocking, I think, oh, I think I have some berries happening over here as well. You know what, we can sort of decide if we wanna do that later because it would be nice to have some over the stocking, I think, or you could leave it as is if you just want it cleaner. Let's have it over the stocking and then we can skirt around it. Yeah, sorry, doing it again one here. Just a little bit. And then taking the Matter Lake Red, we're going to create these guys here. Okay, that's that. Uh, now we can use the number eight and create some, let's spread some, actually let this dry. Let's start painting the bits to the side here. So I think for this, let's use, uh, what color should we use? Should we use, should we use some olive green? It'll, I think it'll pull out some of these olive bits quite nicely. What do you guys think? Yeah, okay, let's use olive. So I'm gonna, gonna dampen the area first, making sure that I am not cooling the water too much in this bit. So I'm gonna dampen the area with water first and then go in with the color so that once I add the color, it's gonna flare nicely. So going in now with the color and allowing it to do its thing. And I'm just pushing the color around, um, trying to make the edges the most dominant in darkness. So I'm just going in back and just highlighting this outer edge here. Okay, so now we'll do the same thing 
except instead of watering, uh, yeah, applying water first or dampening it first, I'm just going in and painting it in. Try both techniques and see what you like better. So pushing all the color to the edge so that we've got the darkest hue at the edge here. And allow this to dry. We get a little bit more actually before I allow it to dry and just add a tiny little dab at the edge. Great. We've got this really bright bits to the stocking. Okay, so now I think this is still damp. So we're gonna allow this to maybe do a little bit more drying. Let's tackle the inner bit over here. What do you guys think about adding some ornamental, ornamental, some floral bits on the inside here, just this portion? Kind of like how we did for the, um, for the bauble for our last Sunday live. Good, okay, let's let's do that. Let us use metallics. Beatrice, I hope you finally got your metallics from KMS. You can just nod if you, if you got it or didn't, that's okay. Um, so I think I'll use what I have here. Feel free to use whatever you have on hand. I really like the Gemini and Leo that I have for gold colors that we can use to kind of enhance and create some florals in there. So that's what I'm gonna use. So I think I will start off with using the Leo first. And it's more like an orangey, bronzy kind of look. And then the Gemini is more of a gold look. So activating the color because this takes a while. We're going to use this to create our pretty florals. And I'll use the two, um, the two brush techniques so that I can get some nice blending. So we're going to create the first flower here. I need a little bit more color because what I'm going to do is do three petals and then go in with this number eight and try and get a little bit of the Gemini, but just a tad bit so that when I go in and add additional lines, I'm also gaining color from what we added. Now it's very, very light, but I want it to be light because, okay, here I added a little bit more color. And I'm mixing in some of that color in with the other bit as well. And now we've got like a two-tone metallic flower. But the center, I'm gonna, we're gonna add either dark green or like uh, the Mars brown, just to add a couple of dots at the end once we finished doing the flower itself. Flowers and the whole painting that whole area I mean. I'm gonna add a little bit more of these to kind of enhance the look. Perfect. Let's add one more here. I'll do three. And trying to alternate and add this golden hue in there, trying to get some activation and blending happening.
And then going back in with the orangey color and trying to kind of get it to blend. Uh, let's do another one over on this end here at the bottom. Making this one slightly bigger for a variation in size. And then I'll just do one more. Actually, I'll do two more. One kind of probably poking out over here so that it hugs the edge and we're giving the edge some definition. I won't go in with the gold for that. And then one over here as well. Off to the edge. And then finally, uh, just to kind of give it like some flow, let's add some uh, little buds. So I've got one here. So if we do a sprig coming out this way, then let's do some buds over here. Okay, these buds are massive. Okay, and then I'll do some here. So then we've got this break coming kind of this way. Um, yeah. And then I'll do some over on this side. And then if we need to add more, we can always go back in and add some more. So now I'm gonna go, um, I've washed my number four and we're gonna get some green and add some green elements. So for this green, uh, let's use let's use the chromium, which is like a muted green, chromium oxide. That's what it's called. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of the brown in it so that it's a tad bit like a woodsy green as opposed to a brighter green, just because we've got lots of green. So let's start uh, by having one sprig here, attach that and attaching these guys. And then attaching these guys over here at the bottom. And attach these guys over here. I know I wanted them to go on this flower, but I kind of messed up, I think. All right, so we've got the attachments. Now we can just create the leaves. Actually, let me do, let me do one this way and we can add some more of those elements. And let's do one on there. And now what we're going to do is before I add 
the little buds to these guys. We're just gonna go in and add some leaves. So for the leaves, feel free to do like your regular long leaves. I'm gonna do the long leaves, like using the tip, pressing down and then trailing towards the, the branch. Do a couple of them just protruding from the flower as well. So there's no real branch to it. It's just coming from the flower. And we're gonna use, we're gonna switch the consistency of the color. Uh, in a bit. So then we've got a nice variety of different hues of green. Um, so I've got some there, yeah, some here. I'm doing one on the edge as well, again, to kind of shape what we have happening. Uh, I'll do one leaf coming out from this guy, kind of protruding downward. Another one going this way. Notice like I'm giving them movement, like I'm not just making them straight or stoic looking. So I'll do one leaf happening on this as well. Yeah, of some from the top. Again, I'm trying to find areas that I can paint these in and make it look like it's also shaping um, our little stocking, taking the shape of our little stocking rather. Okay, so now we can go for a slightly different green. So what I'll do is, getting just a tiny bit of the um, olive and I'm gonna water it down so that it's not as dark. So we've got a variety of different consistencies and then you've got some background, foreground kind of thing happening. And now we'll do the same style of leaves. but it'll be lighter. And here's another one. If you like the white space, go ahead and keep as much of it as you want. But if you like to just get lost with creating your own, painting your own leaves, then go with the flow. Do what you prefer. We get some here. and some over on this end over here as well. Okay. 
And then I think from, from on this side over here too. And then I think we should be done to go and just add some of those. additional buds that I previously mentioned. I think we're almost done with this. So I've just added another sprig here. I'll add some buds on those. And then uh, just some over here as well. Going downward, we've got some at the top here. So we'll add one more branch to that. And yeah, that's good. So now I'll go in and add our last few little buds. So here we go, here's one, another, Here's some more. And what I'm also doing is just to kind of enhance that keep keep with the whole um, the dotted feel, loose feel. I'm adding a couple of dots here and there. Still adding dots. Uh, add some at the top, and I think that should be enough. Just Delicate detail can be so uh, addicting, like the dots and not knowing when to stop, but it also adds something, like it almost completes the whole image. So never skip out on details like this if they cross your mind when you're painting. Um, okay, so I've got that and now we're going to do the center of the flowers before we can tackle the final top. So for the center I said we're tying in all the colors so I'm just going to use the Mars brown. And we're just going to add dots, again dots. And I want it to be very dark, the color obviously, so that it really stands out and pop. So 
just like that. So that's why I'm getting the color just on the tip of my brush and I'm getting it directly from the pan so that it's nice and dark and potent. Got this guy on the edge. And then this guy at the top. And then this just touching up these final ones. And that's good enough. Okay, great. Oh, actually, before I washed it off, I should just do the, the string right away. But maybe you know what? Do the string in a in a metallic would be nice too. Okay, so now for the top bit of our stocking. What color do you guys think we should do? Should we make it red for the band? Or should we do, I feel like there's too much green already. I think we should do a red and then it'll be more, yeah. Okay, let's do the red. And instead of doing the ruby, we'll do the Matter Lake red. Instead, I think that should be good. So just to look at the colors really quickly, that's Matter Lake Red. We've got the chromium and we've got the olive. So I think it would be, yeah. Okay, so let us um, dampen the area first and then go in with color. So I'm using the number eight to go in and Dampen these areas. And I'm painting and skirting around. Actually, I'm just going to do half because this is not 100% cotton and I don't want it to dry up quickly. So I'm just going to do half of it first. So I'm getting the matter like red. I'm allowing it to kind of just fizzle off because I want, I want it to kind of meet when I do the other side without forming like this dried up edge almost, that makes any sense. This almost looks like a pink. Adding more of the color in the corner. And then a little bit to the bottom. And then I'm just gonna extend it all the way across. I know I said I would dampen the other area first, but I think I'm just gonna extend it, paint it in. So I started off with doing the wet on wet, and now we're just going and painting the whole thing. And as I'm pulling the color over, I'm adding more water to my brush so that it kind of blends off into a lighter hue. Now, if you like the pink, leave it pink. Well, it's like a light red, right? If you want it to be a more intense red, definitely go in and get more. Now, I'm pushing all the color to the edge. And so I'm going to get some more color for sure and add it. Add it in. And then this area I forgot here a bit. I'm gonna paint this bit around. I 
adding more color to the edge here. Taking off most of the water, I want to get a nice dark red. So at this point, if you want to give that a knitted feel to the top of this, if it's not a furry stocking uh, or a furry top for this stocking or velvety that you can actually go in right now with a finer brush and add more of those lines and details to make it look like it's knitted. Again, that's if you want to do that, I'm not going to do that. But it's a thought. Mine looks like a plush, like a plush top. So I think it's fine. Okay, so now we're gonna do this bit off the stocking. So I'm gonna roughly paint this in or dampen it in with the water and then we'll do a darker red. So I'm mixing the red with a little bit of green. So the Matter Lake red is gonna be mixed in with a little bit of green so we can get a darker hue for the inside, okay? So I got some Matter Lake red here on my palette and I'm getting some green, mixing that for a darker color. And I'm gonna start off painting the bottom portion of it and allow it to kind of flare upward. And then I'll take some of the red and cover finish the top. So kind of the same technique that we used with the bubbles. And I'm leaving this big thing of white space that you see here, because we're going to have the rim be gold. Or that's what I had planned for anyways. So here we go, just adding that red, so now they blend in, like the bright red and the dark red blend in, and it looks like a, looks more like a gradient and more gradual as opposed to just random. But I think I need a darker version of the dark red because it looks very watered down and light in color. And now this looks like a dirty green. I'm gonna leave it as is. It is what it is. Maybe I could do a little bit more of the matter like right at the top and then swipe it away. Yeah, something like that. Oh, and I want some of this to be under under over here ever so lightly. So I'm using the tip of this brush to kind of spread this around. Again, trying to leave like white space in between. So being very intentional to not paint over the leaves. Okay, that's it. And finally, the gold that I was talking about for the rim. So let's do the gold. Activate it. And I'm gonna start, oops my hand on there and check out some of the red. Okay. 
Okay, then I will have to do this. Just holding it, like resting my hand on my on my wrist, really. And holding it up, holding the brush upward so I can kind of go around without interfering with any damp areas on, on the sheet. I've got a little bit of gold running into the red there. You can't quite see it as well in the camera setting, I guess. But it's there. And that is it. Actually, you know what? You could even do a name in gold on here because it just looks like it's begging for a name or a word or something. I'll leave that up to you guys. Oh, you need to do the string. Uh, you can go simple and make it black, or like I mentioned, we could make it metallic. I think I would like to make it metallic. I'm gonna use the gold, same gold that we have there and tie it in. So it's like a gold string is holding this up. And that's it. Actually, it is it, but this is optional, the splatter. So if you wanna do the splatter, I'm gonna take the number eight and I will do the splatter in a red. So I think the red mixed in with the green, like a dark red. That's what I will do. So I'm mixing some of that color on here. And I'll do this flatter at the top here. And then a little bit on the side. If you don't want it getting at the top, you can take a sheet of paper and just cover that area. I want some over here on this side too. And that's it. I think this is good enough. We don't need anything else. And then once it's fully dried up, we can just go in and erase all the pencil markings. And like I mentioned, if you wanna add a name on this here, you can absolutely do that. But this is our little hanging stocking. And I'm going to stop recording.